Hi, I'm James, a first year medical student at Clare College, and I'm just going to be sharing a few tips on preparing for the BMAT. Hi guys, my name is Misa. I'm also studying medicine at Clare College, Cambridge, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys some tips and tricks on writing a personal statement that really makes a statement. Hi, my name is Lauren, and I'm a second year studying medicine at Clare College, Cambridge. I'm going to talk about my interview process and how my college choice really shaped that interview. So in terms of choosing a Cambridge college, they have a Cambridge Uni wide open day where all of the colleges open their doors and you can go around and see all of them. But it is really quite big. There are a lot of colleges. And so when I went, I actually didn't get to see a lot of them. But I chose a handful that were kind of central and quite pretty. And Claire was one of those and it was really beautiful and I really enjoyed it. So I then went home and I looked on the college website specifically and they all have medicine application pages where they sort of talk about what they expect. And what I really liked about the Claire interview page and what really drew me to it was that in terms of their medicine interview, they talked about how, yes, you need science and how that is the nature of the Cambridge preclinical course, but essentially that you're going into a caring profession and that medicine is about caring for vulnerable people, which is something that I thought, you know, really emulated my belief and my want to go into a career as opposed to just picking a subject, like you are choosing a profession when you choose medicine. And it talked about how in their interview, they would ask you about work experience and they would ask you about your personal statement, which I thought was really unusual because a lot of what I'd heard about the Cambridge interviews before was that they only care about science and they don't really care about your personality or anything like that. But that was quite different to the Claire page. And so, which is what basically drew me to Claire. Uh, they also have specific college open days on different days. So I went along to the Claire Science Open Day and on that day we were given a medicine talk by our DOS, our current DOS, Paul Fletcher. And again, a lot of what he said really kind of resonated with what I believed I was going into in terms of a profession, how he talked about how they wanted to get to know us and see if, you know, we were equipped to go into a profession that is for caring for people. And they wanted to see that in the interview as opposed to just science. So again, it basically backed up everything that I believed and everything that I wanted from my college. So in terms of the interview itself, I had two interviews, they were both 20 minutes long. Uh, this will vary college to college uh, because the interviews are just done on a college basis. But mine were two 20 minute interviews and each one was split into 10 minutes. So it was like having four mini interviews because when I went in there were two people and they each did 10 minutes with me and didn't like interact at all. So the first one I went into, I was actually the first medicine interview of the whole college of the year, <laughs> which was quite scary. And I got there really early and had no idea where I was going, but there were people there to help me, which was really great. And it all worked out fine in the end. So I walked into my first one and he gave me some diagrams to look at. And then we basically talked through the diagrams. He asked me what I thought they were. And when I got stuck, he would kind of work through the questions with me. So there were a lot of, he wasn't asking me like exactly what I knew or anything about the facts, but really wanted to know how I think. The second part of that same interview was more ethical questions. He asked me about sort of what would I do with the drug or what, kind of demographic of people I would give it to if there were such and such circumstances. So there were a lot of different like ethical questions, which again, I really appreciated because it was more clinical and it did discuss medicine as a profession more than just the science of it. And then I had a little bit of a break and then I had my second interview of the same day and that was with my DOS, who is currently my DOS, and a another man who I don't know. But uh, my DOS basically asked me about my work experience, he asked me about my personal statement and he asked me what I liked about it, what I didn't like about my work experience. And I thought again that was really nice because it felt like he was trying to get to know me as a person and how I would be as a doctor, which um, I really enjoyed basically and I think that was my best part of the interview. And then the other part of the interview did not go so well. Um, he asked me to draw a diagram and I had no idea how to draw the diagram and I basically said look I'm sorry I don't know how to draw this. But he really helped me through it in the end, he gave me a nudge, he drew a little bit of it and then I continued and basically they worked through it. And I would say that basically none of the preparation I did for the interviews really helped me, but a lot of the A-level and GCSE stuff that I'd already learned did help from school, there was nothing higher than that. And so knowing my A-level stuff really helped me in the interview as opposed to like preparing like loads of extra stuff. Obviously it's nice to have extra stuff to kind of show off, but um, in the end that was sort of what they asked me about. And I came out of it like not knowing how I'd done at all, I was completely baffled, I had no idea. But it turned out pretty well and why I ended up at the college that I'm at. So each year there are two options for sitting the BMAT, you can either sit it at the end of August or the end of October. I chose the end of October, but there are pros and cons to both. 
So although you don't have to do the UK CAT for Cambridge, um, you might want to do that for other medical schools. And in that case, you might want to split up your preparation. So doing the October setting allows you to put a bit more time between your UK CAT and BMAT preparation. Whereas the August sitting is likely they're going to be a bit closer together. Also, the August setting doesn't have as many test centers. The pro to the August sitting is that you don't have to do any preparation during year 13. So it's going to be easier alongside your A-level work. You just got to take all those things into consideration and then choose which sitting's best for you. So in terms of preparation, I think four weeks is plenty. Uh, the most important resource available to you is the collection of past papers online. So they're about 15 years, I think. So it's important to go through these and get comfortable with the question style for each of the three sections. Section two, the science section, features AS level content for chemistry, biology and maths and about GCSE content for physics. If you're not doing physics A level currently, you may have forgotten some of the physics stuff. So there is a free online textbook which covers all the scientific content you're going to need for section two. And that's on the BMAT website. And that's probably the most important resource for section two besides doing the past papers. Additionally, for section three, the essay section, I think it's important to go through and maybe do a few plans or write a couple essays under time conditions just to prep for it because it's quite a different format to most exams. You only get one sheet of paper and quite a, a short amount of time to write the essay. So just having your ideas flowing through practice is probably a good idea. So I found that there are a couple of useful books on Amazon which were both relatively inexpensive. So the first one I used was uh, BMAT Answers Explained. And that was quite useful because when you get told an answer from a mark scheme and you don't know why it's correct, it's important to see the reasoning that got to the answer because they often assess similar skills year on year. Also, there's a book called 700 BMAT Questions, which although it's written independently, it does feature questions of similar content strength and similar content style. So throughout the days during October when I was preparing, I would take this to school and do a few extra questions if I had time in the day, maybe in a free period or something. It's not essential, but it just was a little bit helpful for me, I think. So there are lots of other resources online. Some are free, like forums, some are paid, such as courses. You can look into these and see if you think any would help you with your preparation, but it's important that you don't think you have to shell out lots of money to do well, because you don't, most of the important resources such as the past papers are all free. So on the exam day, just take it as you would any other exam, do the best you can. It is an important part of the application process because it allows colleges to distinguish between all applicants because everyone takes it, but it's not the only way to make yourself stand out. So with that, good luck to all future applicants and I hope this was helpful. Now we don't have very much time today, but I'm gonna do my best to get through as much as I can and hopefully these will help you guys out. Let's go. So my first tip would be to bullet point anything that you could possibly include in your personal statement and this could be minor things like an article that you read that really interested you and then when you look at it you can see okay so these are things that I could possibly include in my statement. So the reason why I say to also include smaller points is because you never know when you can sprinkle in those smaller points to back up your claims for larger points or also just to add more substance to your whole personal statement because then that leads us on to number two which is to then refine that list a little bit more and consider what things you want to prioritise including because although 4,000 characters seems like a lot, when you get writing it really isn't that much. Whilst you're prioritising, also keep in mind why you are prioritising certain things. Work experience I think is definitely something that you need to have in your personal statement and the thing about a personal statement is that it's better if you go into details with a few points than if you just list everything you've done off. If you just start listing it doesn't really show what you've learnt from it and what you've gained from it. So when you're prioritising, keep in mind why you're prioritising certain things, what you're actually going to talk about, and also keep in mind how much detail are you going to go into each of those points. Which leads me on nicely to my third point, which is I really recommend writing your personal statement in a way that it almost tells a story about your progression into learning and your progression into deciding that medicine was for you. So what I did was I talked about how my interest kind of grew. In one particular paragraph, I spoke about a lecture that I attended about neurology and how that lecture got me really interested in neurology. And then I talked about a book that I read about neurology, which was The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, which is also very popular in personal statements. After I mentioned that book, I talked about how that then piqued my interest. So then I went on and read another book, which was called The Psychopath Whisperer. I found that book extremely interesting, which is why I then did my EPQ project based off of the physiology of psychopathic brains and how it affects behaviour. But all in all, although it sounds complicated, it shows that how my interest went from neurology from a neurology lecture to then 
a more niche topic within neurology, which was psychopathic brain. And it tells a story about how you've explored your interests through each of those different stages. Whereas if you had just said, I read a book about neurology and then I went to a lecture about endocrinology and then I studied a, an article about cancer. Of course, all those things are really interesting and it shows that you've been doing a lot of further reading, but it doesn't really show how you've explored what you've learned in all those situations. And so with the whole storytelling concept, it shows a kind of journey of how you've grown your understanding of this one particular topic that you really found interesting. For me, I think that's a really good way of talking about your extra reading and your supercurricular activities because instead of just listing things off, it shows a journey about how you came from one point to another and how you've explored your academic interests in that way. And I just think that's a lot more interesting to read than just poo -poo -poo -poo. work experience. I think is one of the most important things in a medical personal statement to be honest and I really really do recommend going into one work experience in a lot of detail and really exploring how that changed your perception on healthcare if it did. When you are prioritising what to include and what not to include I do want to say things like Duke of Edinburgh being netball captain or anything like that it still includes some of those that show your personality and show the skills that you've learned but also keep in mind that when you're applying for medicine at Cambridge it's more to do with the academic stuff and less to do with the extracurricular stuff but remember you are applying to other med schools as well so do include some of those other stuff that you've done but just not too heavily we talk about how that is relevant for medicine the thing about these smaller achievements that you have you can always sprinkle them in so i talked about how i did ncs and i raised a certain amount of money for my local disability center but i included that with the point about me volunteering at that disability center so in that sense as i said you can kind of sprinkle in smaller points with larger points which leads me on to my next point which is to always provide evidence for your claims so don't just say i'm empathetic or i have good communication skills make sure you always back it up with some sort of evidence and that also goes with saying things like my interest is the heart so don't just say I have an interest in cardiology without then showing what you've done to explore that interest. Make sure you always give evidence because that really does make a huge difference in my opinion. Whenever you're saying I have a certain quality or I have a certain interest, give evidence, please. <laughs> the next tip is to show how you've reflected on work experience or volunteering or anything that you've done because it's good and all saying you've done it but it doesn't really show anything unless you go on to then explore how that's changed you or how you've learned something from it it really doesn't matter about what work experience you do or how much work experience you do it matters about what you learn from it because i didn't talk about all of them in my personal statement i talked about a few of them if you are struggling to find work experience also realize that you don't have to do it at a gp or at a hospital it can literally be at a primary school helping out children to learn you gain so much interpersonal skills there i'd say that i learned a lot more in my volunteering at a disability center than i did at my gp or my hospital if you are going on work experience at a gp or a hospital then do take a notebook and kind of write down the things that you learn obviously patient confidentiality and all that but if you hear about a new word or you see a doctor do something really interesting that you really like or a quality in a doctor that you really like then do jot it down so that you don't then have to trace back everything in your memories and you have it in your notebook be honest i have lost track on what number i'm on but a really nice way to end your personal statement in my opinion would be to acknowledge the hardships of working in medicine just to show that you have a realistic perception on what it would be like to actually work in the nhs or just to work within healthcare because a lot of people will go into medicine with a glorified idea of being a doctor when reality is not like that and i think that having a realistic perception and showing that you acknowledge that in your personal statement somewhere i think it's a really nice way to end your personal statement your personal statement is going to take a while to write down i think i had a whole folder which was personal statement one two three four five six seven blah, blah, blah. i don't know how many times i wrote last personal statement but i wrote it a few times just know that it will take some time to get your personal statement right or it might not you know you might get it on the second time i don't know but for me it took quite a long time because i kept polishing it every time and give your personal statement to as many people as you can give it to your teachers give it to your friends don't settle in your personal statement because that's the one thing that you can control in this whole application process you can control what they're seeing in that personal statement you can kind of control what questions you get asked based on your personal statement so don't include something in your personal statement that you wouldn't want to talk about in an interview which is why it's important that you do talk about things that you really like in your personal statement so that you are prepared to then talk about it to be honest i didn't come into this video very prepared started giving tips off the top of my head but i hope it has helped you regardless i also have a youtube channel which is misaki is a mess go subscribe to my channel if you guys would like to see some more content about cambridge about medicine mostly vlogs haven't posted in a while but nonetheless good luck to anyone who is applying for med school i know it's probably extremely stressful for you guys right now no matter what stage of the application you're at but remember you do come out of it the other side and everything will work out all the best to you guys i hope these tips have helped you in one way or another and 
Maybe I'll see you guys soon. All right, bye.